So I'm here in London to show you Mia Hawks van. It's got a really interesting bed system, really great use of space, and has a slightly unconventional system of buildings. Now Mia Hawk is an artist and I think she's made quite a special van. Hello, uh, my name is Mia Hawk. I'm an artist and this is the van I built. It took me three months. It's a Peugeot Boxer 2016, long wheelbase. And uh, let me give you a little tour. This content is sponsored by Outdoorsy. Through Outdoorsy, you can rent your camper van out to make extra cash, and you can rent a van to try van life before you commit. I made a van so that I could spend more time focusing on what I'm passionate about, which is creating artwork for my exhibitions and for my patrons. It also enables me to get out into nature, which I draw so much inspiration from. If you subscribe to my Patreon, you can even get your hands on an original painting like this. All the prints that are produced from this one painting that I do every month exclusively to my Patreon. And you can also get smaller rewards like postcards. There's a monthly live stream where you can watch me paint and you can ask me basically any questions about my artwork or my techniques and I'll also be posting loads of uh, sort of small tutorial videos as well as answering questions from you. So I'm gonna do a special deal for anyone who finds me through this video. Um, if you subscribe to the Print Master tier and you send me a message that you found me through this video, I'm going to give you a free print. If you want to know a bit about the series of birds that I'm making, check out this video. This is a fold down Murphy bed, it's queen size. Uh, so when I designed the van and the layout, one thing that was really important for me was one thing was loading and the second thing was having a decent space to work in. I really wanted to create an office slash workspace that I could do my artwork in and that's really a problem for me if I wanted to have a fixed bed so that's why I opted for the fold down bed. Um, it's really easy and I kind of wanted to make it like it looks like just a wall. So the way that it works is folds down perfectly like that. So um, the bed was a bit of an adventure to make and it turned out that's the only thing that I haven't made myself. I designed it and I tried to make it out of wood the first time but it turned out it's just not a very suitable material to make such a heavy object with. So um, it's made out of steel that somebody helped me weld together basically and then it's it's got a frame that's also um, connected to the chassis and it's got hinging on two swivel plates which I bought from eBay for like seven pounds each um, and then I made the uh, uh, fold down legs for it myself and uh, designing it was such a puzzle because like I didn't want anything less than a small double so basically everything has to come exactly to the centimeter and I think there's like there's literally two centimetres between the bed and the kitchen area. So this bit has got a flat bar, so this is welded to a flat bar, um, that is directly screwed and bolted into the skeleton of the van. So basically what we were scared about was like in the event of a crash and like obviously you'd never hope that that's going to happen but that the whole mechanism isn't going to like come crashing <laughs> at the back of you um at the front so it's bolted into the ground and into the flat bar all alongside there so hopefully it yeah it doesn't move basically so i was looking at other options which is the classic thing of having you know making a table and making a, a, a sofas into a bed i just didn't want to have to spend 20 minutes 10 minutes making my bed every day with this, I can literally make my bed in like three minutes and it's gone, which is great. So um, I really try to utilize the space the best way possible. So we've got a couple of odd storage spaces, but basically um, there's the space above the bed here, which is kind of good for food and like small cans and stuff. We've got the space 
here. And then we've got um, basically this whole thing is just storage. So like good for clothing, equipment, you know, climbing gear, that sort of thing. I have a little bit of storage underneath here, which the batteries and all of that is in this section, but you can sort of, it's not very pretty done, but you sort of get a tiny bit of, you know, space in that section. So this is my kitchen. Um, on my old van, I only had two hobs and I really missed having an oven because I love roasted vegetables. So I really wanted an oven on this new one and it's been pretty damn great. I mean, it's not, it doesn't get quite as hot as a normal oven, but it definitely roasts vegetables, which is the main thing. It's also got a grill, um, yeah, tap, water, very noisy water pump. Um, storage wise in the kitchen, um, again, I've tried to like be as economic, like utilize every single free space. So I did this sort of thing where it's only about 10 centimeters wide, but you can still fit some drawers and stuff. Uh, this is my cutlery drawer slash uh, spice rack. This is my water tank, it's 70 liters. Um, my waste water tank is underslung and that's 90 liters altogether. Um, on that, we've got the water pump and accumulator. I've got like a um, indicator showing how much water I've got. Uh, this is my filling thing. This is my gas cupboard. I've got a 11 litre refillable LPG gas tank, which is great for smaller trips, but during the winter, if you're going away for a long time, actually I've got quite a lot of appliances that need gas. And I was thinking I might could have done with maybe a bigger one, but it's as long as you've got filling stops, it's fine. So uh, my last van, I didn't have a shower and I really missed it. So I really wanted to try and build a shower on this one. It was quite a puzzle, not just for the layout, but like also figuring out how to do it. And it's a curved space and making it all waterproof. But um, I think I sort of managed to do quite, it's, it's a lot bigger than I thought it would be basically. So I'm pretty happy with it. So uh, I made it out of these, wet room panels which actually I found quite cheap so I think like the, the panels themselves cost me under 100 quid altogether which is mm. great the shower mixer bar was like 30 quid from Amazon uh, the shower pan was probably the cheapest one I could get which was under 100 pounds as well so the shower actually didn't end up costing me that much money um, what was great about these panels as well is that they they're very flexible so they bend with the curvature of the van. Uh, so I was able to actually fit most of them like really snugly and yeah, I was terrified that I would get some sort of leak in the shower that I'd be like, oh my God, I don't know where the water's coming from and I don't know where to find this leak. But it's actually been, um, it's been really good. No leaks so far at all. So one thing was I designed it so that I could stand diagonally. And I, one thing that's important was I could lift off both my apples, which actually there's, there's more than enough room to do that. Um, one quite nice feature about the shower is that I used to install like a, I think it's like a bidet, but it works really well in terms of saving water because you don't want the water. Like if you had a 10 minute shower, your water tank would be go from full to empty like instantly. Um, so with this, you just press the shower head and then, um, yeah, just use the water that you need really. Don't uh, use anything in between shampooing and, you know, do all of that stuff. So features is we've got a uh, drain that goes to underneath the van to the underslung water tank. We've got a hot and cold shell that goes through a water heater. And we've got a vent, which also has a cool color on it when you turn it on. <laughs> very very yeah. cool, Mia. But it's so cool. <laughs> it's like, it was like, it was like four pounds on eBay. I didn't want the lights because I wanted it to be more stealthy because you can see it from the outside, like yeah. the lights, but I was like, well. It's good to broadcast it's when you're showering to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> So um, the main issue with the old van was that the UK winter, there is hardly any sun because the sun is so low. So even if it's a sunny day, it doesn't quite like top up the uh, batteries to the amount that you want. So 
running the heater in winter that required electricity it just drained my batteries in literally a night and I had to like keep um, recharging them like every three days which was really annoying so with this one I really wanted a heater that didn't require electricity it's a Truma S2000 I believe and so in my old van I had the Propex heater which I found the main issue I found with that was that it just went through my electricity so quickly in the winter so i spent quite a lot of time researching a heater that didn't require electricity and i found this one it was a little bit more expensive than the propex but in my opinion so worth it so it's yeah no electricity required whatsoever it's a little bit big and clunky which was a bit annoying and another thing to put in the puzzle but um yeah it works really well all you need to do is basically um you just put in like that and then it pretty much just stays stays on and it goes from like barely hot at all to super hot in like five minutes so this space it will get to a sauna if you put it all the way up it's going to be a sauna within five minutes basically so it's a really great piece of kit the only thing is it is a little bit more complicated to install than the propex heater so uh firstly there is an uh you need to cut a huge hole at the bottom of the van about that size where the inlet uh, oxygen inlet and the outlet goes at uh, some of the outlets and then secondly uh, there is also a flue that you have to install on the roof where all the exhausts go then we've got a bit of electricity stuff so basically we've got all the light switches on this uh, we've got um, plugs and the inverter on and off button and then Basically, I was just like, well, I've got to have a flu, so uh, flew up the roof because of the heater, so I just turned the rest of it into storage space. So we've got lots of sort of random bit of toiletries. So um, I have got two skylights, um, both for natural light and to give a bit of extra ventilation. Uh, this one has got the, I think it's just called a turbo fan, but yeah, really good fan for extraction when you're cooking and the skylight above the bed has also got a very cool blackout blind so if you want to have a lion you are not going to get the sun in your face basically so my blinds so i wanted something quite cool and typically me i think oh my god i want this really nice thing and don't realize how much work is going to go into it so i really wanted some nice timber doors but they cost like 200 quid or something you know for both of them so I figure I can just make that myself um, so I started custom making my timbre door window blinds um, and actually it works really well and it's um, blackout yeah complete blackout in the evenings and then you just sort of they're a little bit tricky to like pull all the way up but it works on my roof I've got three solar panels and they are all together 540 watts. I really wanted a bigger electrical system than I had in the other one because again in the UK cloudy days are plenty so it's really difficult if you don't have a permanent hookup. Um, my batteries are 430 amp hours in total divided by two batteries. And basically that amount of panels and batteries seems to be enough for my needs. Uh, definitely on sunny days it's a complete overkill but it is the cloudy days that I was preparing for. So this is actually a table that's more popular to get for boats. Um, so it's like a, I got it through like a marine you know supply website sort of thing. I think the brand is called Laguna but it's really good because you can adjust it in so many ways. You can adjust the height, um, it goes straight onto a table here and fastens and then you can take it away and basically all that's left is this plate and then this table here I just got off eBay 30 quid and then you screw up the, the plate underneath it. So the main structure of the van I built out of aluminium. Uh, there's quite a lot of appliances that uh, needed to be fitted into the van so I really wanted to try and save as much weight as I could. So this is two centimeter hollow tube aluminium I didn't want to learn how to weld. People were like, oh, you need to learn how to weld. And actually it worked just fine using 
um, self-tapping screws and brackets um, and, and the bits that I didn't uh, that I knew that I needed to cover up and I couldn't check if the screws were unloose I untied I also super glued the screws in place so I had peace of mind that it wouldn't come undone but yeah I think I probably ended up saving 30 to 40 kilos and also in places having a much more sturdy build than if I would have built it out of the wood. The only thing obviously is that it is a little bit more expensive, but I did find a site in the UK that did it sort of um, a little bit more cheaply. It cost me, I think it was something like 10 pounds per three meters or something like that. And I must have used, um, I think I, I used like between three and 500 pounds on aluminium. So obviously, Mia, um, we filmed you before yes. in a different van yes. about three years ago. Um, what made you do another van? So I had to get a new van because in October this year, there's the ULES charge coming into London, which means that you have to have a Euro 6 van or get fined like £120 a day. Wow. Yeah. So for, <laughs> for American viewers, basically it's like environmental standards means, yeah, you can't have an old diesel engine without Apple or other standards in it, uh, which means, yeah, so you basically had to get rid of your van, build a new one in time for the regulations to come in. Yes, and I figured that lockdown was like the perfect time to do that. And also actually grab the opportunity to do a couple of upgrades and like things that I missed about the old van. Like I deliberately got quite a small van the first time because it was my first vehicle ever and I was scared about driving a huge van and actually Driving a big van isn't actually such a huge issue that I thought it would be, so yeah, yeah. Right. it's good to have more And space. you've made this incredible fold-out bed to give you maximum space. Absolutely, this, cool. I mean this space is, like the living space is really amazing and like, yeah, go, having friends over and like going on small trips with friends is really nice as well because you can sort of comfortably cook over there mm -hmm. and one person can chill out over here with a table and a glass of wine and like right. have a nice conversation. Yeah. That sounds really cool, it's really cool. Um, and how have you found um, van life helps you as a full-time artist in your work and in your general life? It definitely helps me like just escape London life completely. Mm -hmm. So you know when you do have that sort of flexible time being able to just go anywhere well within reason obviously we're still in coronavirus but and bring my work with me is uh, really amazing. So to sum up guys, um, I think this van is really worth paying attention to, especially with the bed and the systems that she's put in. It's really, really innovative and you've done an amazing job making this bed design, which I'm trying to persuade her to draw the plans up and we'll sell it through the website and she can get, get the money or whatever. But anyway, um, you really, really need to check out her Patreon. Um, incredible artwork, you can get it like on you know you support her on a monthly basis and you get all these little perks and things and if you support the right level you get actually original artwork and her artwork is stunning you also need to check out her youtube channel which is here um the youtube channel has got a bunch of your like how to stuff and draw along yeah, and things a, like that yeah it? it's a little bit of like what i'm creating at the moment there's also a little bit of van life stuff because i've been finishing off the van and like nice. whenever i go on trips and stuff like you get shots of the van and where i go and a bit of information on that nice um, and if you didn't see it before, uh, the video here will show um, like a little trailer for her Patreon and the artwork she's making. Um, it's, it's just stunning. I love your oh, thank artwork. You. <laughs> um, thank and that's you. all. I hope you guys enjoyed the tour. Thank you, Mia, so much for showing us your thank you. second home, <laughs> your second van tour on the channel. I think you might be the first person who's had the second van poured on the channel. Oh, really? Um, so, yeah, thank Woo. you so much. Um, and I hope everyone enjoyed that. And yeah, check out her stuff. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you hadn't noticed, we do sell an ebook for how to convert a van. It has over 190 pages of detailed instructions and diagrams, also 25 video tutorials which are specifically for the ebook buyer. Creating a van for many people is obviously a really intimidating project, but I really believe, and I've seen it time and time and time again, that with the right information, anyone can turn out with a pretty decent van conversion. So check the link in the description, subscribe to the channel if you are not already, uh, and drop us a comment if you like this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.